Hello and welcome to the Framework in Focus, a video cast series where we provide insight into our ebook titled Musculoskeletal Clinical Translation Framework from Knowing to Doing. That's too much of a mouthful for me, so um, we shall here on to refer to it as the framework. Uh, we hope this series will complement the ebook and provide additional insight into the whys, whens, wheres, and hows of the framework. And this aligns with our goal. Um, and our ongoing efforts to facilitate knowledge translation into the management of musculoskeletal pain. Hello, and I am Darren. And my name's Tim. We're up to our, our third in this series, and today we're starting to break down the different elements of the framework more specifically and talk about the individual perspectives. Yeah. Uh, we do have a little warning slide here, and um, as we are speaking about the individual elements today, um, we really want you to understand that that's an artificial way of doing it and that every element is potentially related to everything else and we've spoken about that in the last two episodes. Yeah. Our quote from the man, Albert Einstein, I'll let you read that one Tim. Let every human be respected as an individual. Agreed. And that's a very good summary because that applies fantastically to what we're talking about here because each person's circumstance is individual and as I said before for me that's what makes it interesting but yeah. it also what makes us more effective when we understand that yeah yeah it does and um, and, and and just getting that story and the, the person feeling listened to makes all the difference because they are recognized as an individual <laughs> yeah uh, so this is uh, I, I like this um, picture that's why I put it in there. But um, it, it really is to just remind us that this is a person-centered framework. <laughs> yeah. No other comments needed. So uh, patient perspectives, we have three areas. The, the patient's problem, uh, functional capacity, goals and expectations. Uh, this part of the framework's uh, aligned to the World Health Organization definitions. Yeah, it fits to the ICF, the International Classification Framework around this. So. Yeah. We use that framework and that's broadly accepted in healthcare, but we've used those three labels there to break it down a little bit. So the first one is the patient's perspective. Um, and that is key and interestingly, it actually doesn't take very long if we ask the right questions to, to get their perspective. But for them being heard, we know in other research that's been done listening to patients around their experience with healthcare, one of the big comments is, I wasn't listened to, I wasn't heard, they didn't ask me what I wanted or what my opinion was. Yeah. And the counter to that is when people are listened to and heard, their satisfaction's higher and the outcomes of most types of treatment gets better. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, do you want to touch on functional capacity, goals and expectations? Well, or move just on to, just the... to say, they all blend together, but broadly we need to understand the person's perspective and then considering that from a functional angle is very important because most people come in not because they have pain, for example, but they have pain that limits them from doing something, whether that's sleeping, sport, work, exercise, doing things with their family or whatever, so we need to understand their functional capacity. And then the goals and expectations is vital as well because <laughs> what we think this person might want or need versus what their goal is may not be related to each other so we need to hear that from them as well yeah okay so we, we've got a few kind of example questions um yeah maybe maybe i'll just roll them off and then you can you can Tell us what you think about that. Are you happy with that approach? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no choice there, I think. No, no choice. Um, tell me a story. Yeah, that's a good opening line. We often, well, I used to say to people, um, where's your pain? As my first line, because that was directing me into focusing in on their problem. Right. But that not may not be their main concern. So something like, why have you come to see me today or tell me a story or tell me about your problem is a really good opening line for that person to then take that where it's relevant for them. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, how do these problems affect you? Yeah, so we might hear, oh, I've got a sore knee and then you might focus in again on the 
pathology of that of I'm going to diagnose where this knee problem's coming from. But again, that can be less important than the, the impact of, of that, that problem or the problems they present with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can or can't you do? Yeah. And these are again just sample questions. There's many different ways of phrasing these and there's, there's different ways of going about it. But understanding, as we said, in terms of functional capacity, um, what they're limited with. But depends on the context, and I know this is one that you're interested in, is you know focusing on the positive side, particularly mm. when people are at a, at a low level, you know finding things they can do. Mm. Yeah. yeah, tricky sometimes, but um, yeah, so sometimes you need to focus on that to to help them move forward. But understanding where they're limited in function is is important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your understanding of your problem? That, to me, I think needs to be asked in some way or another with every person because if what we're trying to sell them or explain to them doesn't match at all with what their thinking's going on mm -hmm. then we're stuck in terms of mm -hmm. being helpful for them mm -hmm. so it's a simple question to ask of you know what do you think is wrong or what is your understanding of your problem from that you get very it might be again short but you can get very rich information around mm -hmm. their context or their reality as we talked about earlier mm -hmm. and that can yeah help a shape of where we need to head or what we can do to perhaps mm -hmm. help them out and very commonly the answer is i don't know which yeah. is very interesting <laughs> like you know people can have problems for a long time and not know yeah um, so there's a couple of things on that if they don't know that's kind of good because yeah. you've almost got a clean slate for helping work that out and guide them in the right direction. But if they're six, 12 months, year, two years, five years into their problem and they still don't know, yeah, it's not that's a deal. probably partly yeah. why they're not better because if they don't have a clear understanding, mm. that's a difficulty. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, when you have pain, what do you do? Yeah, and that gives us, that's a well-worded question around how people respond to pain. And that's very important, because some people suck it up and push through and keep going. Yes. Which is a great attribute in some respects, yes. but possibly not very helpful depending on what the problem is. And others do the opposite, they lay down and rest and completely avoid pain. And we need to know that, because once we work out what's going on, we need to frame what they need to do on what their current management strategies are. Yep. Yep. Uh, what do you think you need? Again, that aligns a little bit around goals and expectations, as we mentioned. So what people think they need, and if they're really black and white about, around that, we have to expect that. Mm -hmm. Again, if they're a bit more vague and they're saying, well, I don't know, you're the expert, again, that's fine. You've yes. got a bit more of a clean slate. Yeah. yeah. And um, I can't quite read the bottom of it, but what do you hope to get out of your session or appointment today? Yeah, and that's again around expectations. So depends on where you work and what your favourite mm. approach is. You know, yeah. traditionally some people are more into manual therapy, some people might be more into exercise, some people will be much more into um, taking a non hands on or active approach at all. But if the person's coming in expecting hands-on and you're delivering exercise, there's a mismatch there. Yeah. You might be right, but that doesn't help anyone necessarily. Mm. So again, getting that angle on what do you hope to get out of the session is very important. Yeah, and it doesn't have to take a lot of time to ask those questions, does it? No, well, we've done this, we've, we've set this up as part of one of the, the services we provide in our clinic where we have, it's a flexible structure, but these questions or similar questions are included in that and it, it doesn't lengthen the time of the consult and mm -hmm. the staff that have worked within that have been able to say, well this has actually <laughs> made things simpler and clearer, I haven't gone off on different tangents on drilling down to detail that when I step back and look at the big pictures is possibly not relevant in this situation. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice observation. Um, so yeah, we, we're not going to focus too much on papers but there's a few now and again we'll point out and this is hot off the press and um, um, really nice although I've only looked at one table but I'm sure it is nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've looked at it in more detail but it's, it's, a, it's a very good summary by JP Canero, Sam Bunsley and Peter O'Sullivan 
around the language and how you can put that together in a clinical consult and the different components of that and how that fits with someone's pain experience. So that's a, a strongly recommended read. And it just adds more context to the questions we ask and the reasons behind it and understanding the, I guess, the, the structure of the clinical consult and the information we need to help us move forward is, is you know, it's key for clinicians to be as effective as they can be. Yeah, good. Musculoskeletalframework.net is the web website, Tim. Uh, yep. Comments on the website? Um, check it out, we're putting more resources on there, like these videos to help people better understand and hopefully assist with their management of musculoskeletal pain. Free resources to be shared and used um, all for a good cause. And I did notice there's a um, feedback button on the website that links to your uh, work email, Tim, and I hope you're not wasting all your work time answering emails around the framework. Well, lucky I have the um, editing access to the website, so we may change that. So look in your <laughs> inbox shortly, Darren. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, I will look forward to that. All right. All right thank you for listening, and, and we'll um, catch you next time.